Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This side, Dow Northern Air as the CEO of Strategy Consulting LLP. And today we are going to speak about a topic which is known as convexity of the bonds using Microsoft Excel 2007-2013. Wherein we are going to tell you that how you can use the bond, how you can calculate the convexity of the bonds using Microsoft and Microsoft Excel. Now, as we very well understand that nowadays a lot of stuff is happening in the financial markets. Federal Reserve is all scheduled to increase the rates, and banks are little worried that at what rate Federal Reserve should, uh, you know, when Janet Yellen would uh, increase the increase the interest rate. There is a lot of probability in the market which suggests that uh, Yellen uh, would increase the interest rate by roughly, you know, 25 basis point by September. Although there are a lot of traders and the brokers in the market who clearly suggested that the Yellen may not increase the interest rate now, rather Yellen will take some time uh, increasing the interest rate. So there are a lot of probabilities which are happening across the globe and you are not sure exactly where the, where the situation would turn up, where the things would turn up. But at the same time you also understand the fact that if not in September then by January the Yellen would increase the interest rate. At least we can expect that the 25 basis point increase would happen in January. So the lot of volatility is sure from the bond markets and I'm pretty sure that uh, you might have uh, you must have followed uh, you know uh, the, the volatility the VIX which is volatility index in the market whereby uh, on Friday evening the NASDAQ has been fallen by more than I think 336 basis points or something so that the US stocks has fallen more Consideration the fact that people are losing the hope or people are expecting the lot of volatility in the bond as uh, they are not sure when the Yellen would increase the interest rate whether this September and all. And I'm, uh, you know, also, I, also, I also very well understand the concern behind the same because we are not sure that when Yellen would, uh, you know, uh, would uh, increase the interest rate. But at the same time, we need to be aware as a bond trader, we should understand that how the things would happen, how the things would move forward, so and so forth. So what did happen, we made a video for you. In this video, we are going to show you how to calculate the convexity and what exactly do you mean by the convexity of the bonds. In this video, we assume that the bond face value is 1000, coupon rate is 8%, yield is 10%. Very good. If yield is 10% and period we have assumed for 2 years because it is a semi-annual, uh, henceforth we, we assume this at a 4 years. So what did happen, we did this. In the first year, you will get uh, 40 as your coupon because your coupon is 8%, same annually it would be 4%. Second, you will get 4%, third, you will get 4%, fourth would be you get 4%. Fifth, last, you will get your principal back. Fifth, last, you will get your principal back. Then you will calculate the yield. Here is the yield. I have pressed F2 here. Where Y F2 is not working? Wait a minute. Uh, you will press F2 here. You can see that I am going to calculate the yield wherein the cash flow is 40, the tenor is 1 year and I have taken a half because I am assuming semi-annually. So 10% is the annual. So I assume semi-annually this is 10 by 5%. So this is the yield which we are taking. Okay. So if we add this yield, you can say anything, I can show you here also. So the last principle which we are earning, that principle is also have a yield. So the total cash flow of the bond having coupon 8% and yield 10%. Now I need not to mention you the formula for the yield because yield stands for income by, what is the formula for the yield? Yield stands for income divided by the present income divided by the market value of the bond. This is what yield stands for. Now in this what would happen? You have to calculate this, then we will calculate the weighted average. Now this is what we calculate the weighted average. Now I am pressing here F2. Yield into weight which is tenor. Here yield into weight. Here like this. So this is this, total is this, which is 3636, three, you calculated 3636. Three, now then we will calculate the macular duration. This is how macular duration it would be. You can see the formula, I pressed F2 here. Macular duration is the weights divided by the yield. So that it is something coming 3.77 years. Now this is on semi-annual basis. If we do on the annual, this is considering on semi-annual basis. 
if we consider if we consider on annual basis because we calculate this for semi annually now if we consider on annual basis then this would be into 2 wait a minute it would be into 2 which would be 7.54% now what does that mean if interest rate would swing by 100 basis point here and there if interest rate would swing by 100 basis point here and there then the bond would lose the value by 7.54% so if today i have a bond if i have a bond which is had yield 100% and which is traded at 10% a, yield, a coupon of 8% yield of 10% which is traded at 964 now you can see here if the yield will get down by 100 bips f2 if the yield will go to 9% then the bond price would be 982 if the yield would go up by 10% uh, 1 by 1% which is uh, 11% then it would be 947 we have used a formula here using the formula called present value of the microsoft excel what we also did let us because we we said that as per the macular duration this is 7.5 percent so we calculated the difference between this and this this sorry this is this minus this approximately the same 1 bips here and there, sorry, 100 bips here and there, 100 bips stands for 100 basis point, 100 bips here and there, approximately the same. Now, we will calculate the, uh, you know, 17% uh, of this, 7.54% of this, this, which is your present value, into 7.54%. Which is 72.73. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? If the bond price will swing by 100 basis point, then the price of this security would swing by 72.73. This is what Macular duration is saying to you. If you did this via modified duration, then modified duration is Macular duration divided by 1 plus YTM. You can see that uh, uh, yield is 10%, henceforth we have taken 105, one, one, one right? Third, here you will go with the convexity, the formula of the convexity, I pressed F2. So you deal, you, this is how convexity, now what do you mean by convexity? Formula is very much visible to you. What do you mean by convexity? In convexity, we computed that, now what is convexity? Convexity is a measure of the curvature in the relationship between the bond price and the bond yield. That demonstrated how the duration of the bond changes as the interest rate changes. I hope you all understand about options in derivatives where option means the rate of change, option means you are having a right but not an obligation. So you must understand about options, right? Now in, in, now in options, in options, you are having variety of Greeks and one of them is delta and one of them is gamma. Now, what do you mean by delta? Percentage change in option price due to change in the underlying. What do you mean by gamma? Percentage change in delta due to change in underlying. Sorry, percentage change in option price due to change in delta. Gamma is the second derivative of the delta. Similarly, convexity is the second derivative of the duration. But why people are calculating convexity is because, because duration is always linear in nature. It can only affect you up to plus minus 100, and 100 basis point, max to max plus minus 150 basis point, max to max. But as we understand that bond market is turning highly volatile in nature. Henceforth, it is not suggestive to use the duration every second day. Bonds are going up, going down, this, that so on so forth. As for it is always suggestive in nature that you should calculate this using convexity. Now convexity, there are a lot of people and there are a lot of views about the convexity and one of the views is that convexity should be computed till 300 or 400 basis point. So what do you mean by this? Now sitting today if your yield is 
and suppose it will get down to 13 it will increase to 13 percent or it will get down to uh, it will get down to 7 percent then convexity is the most powerful equipment to calculate but what would if it will go beyond 13 percent although these are rare equations when it will go cross by it, uh, you know 3 percent because even 3 percent is 300 basis point which is big because even on Friday when the federal when the people lost their patience and they started trading in bonds even then even then the UST 10 year UST 10 year United States Treasury Security draws by to 1.67 so 300 is more but for the sake of knowledge only this is for the sake of knowledge we do have concavity in place so when it will cross more than 300 basis point so then it would have con concavity to summarize that to summarize that if you are having if it moves plus minus 100 basis point then you have con then you have duration if it low plus minus 3 percent then you have convexity if it go below 3 percent then you have concavity this is how you calculate the convexity all calculations are right in front of you there is one more thing which we uh, did this to calculate uh, effective duration now effective duration means uh, if you go up you will make sense lot of sense effective duration means that I would reduce the bond price by 100 bips I would increase the bond price by 100 bips and I will calculate the duration based on I will calculate the duration between this line because take a simple example if 10 year United States Treasury is trading at 1.67% and Janet Yellen will not increase the rate by 100 basis point, she will increase the rate anywhere between, between, between 25 basis point to 100 basis point and the duration of that bond is coming 4 year, then this 4 year means it is plus minus 100 basis point. But you should need, you, you, you should see the complete length. That, that, what, what do you mean by this length that if it is go by down by 100 basis point or if it up by 100 basis point then the maximum impact that could happen which is this effective duration which is coming roughly 3.59 if I'm not wrong right this is semi annual in nature so what we do we will make it annual in nature we will select this and we will multiply it by 2 this is how it works this is the purpose of the video to update you about the bond concept, to update you about convexity, to update you about duration and to tell you that convexity is the non-linear measure of the duration because it is not sure, always sure that how the duration would go, it is not always sure. So convexity is the non-linear non measure of the, of the duration. There are few exhibits which we are here to show you like you can see here uh, very well. If convexity, the market con considers a bond convexity when it when pricing it. If the investor expects that market yield will change by very little, investors should not be willing to uh, should not willing to pay much for convexity. They should go for duration. If the market price convexity high, investor with the expectation of the low interest rate volatility will probably want to sell convexity. To be honest, all the option free bonds have convexity in place. For yield and maturity, lower convex the lower corporate rate gives the higher convexity. You all understand if the rates are lower and any volatility would happen, then convexity would be much higher. Very, very higher. This is how the diagram of the convexity would be. You can very well see. If the yield fall, duration would, duration would rise. If the yield would rise, duration would go up. This is where the convexity is. You can very well see the red line. This is where the convexity stands at here. Convexity is very, very important in place. And believe me, today PIMCO, which is the largest bond holder in US, they have reduced their uh, duration uh, by, they have reduced the duration of all their portfolio. They are expecting that Yellen will increase uh, interest rate. In fact, the former uh, founder of PIMCO, Mr. Bill Ross, he also suggested on the Bloomberg TV that the Yellen should increase rate first in September and then by uh, December or generally to make it 1%. So convexity is going to be highly, highly volatile. Duration is going to be highly, highly volatile. The same would come in Indian context also. 
when there is a lot of big lot of pressure we have on the Urjit Patel and when Urjit Patel are asked when the Urjit Patel are asked to reduce the repo rate by 100 basis point and if this would happen then the so called implied curve which is 10 year GSEC would also fall and this would lead to a lot of volatility in the books of the primary dealers. So a lot of things are happening around, lot of things are moving so we need to be very very careful uh, in that regards. With this we take your leave, we thank you very much for your time. We would continue to come up with lot of videos about a uh, variety of topics. We continue to select lot of new topics on the way which are very very important and now our latest videos would be covering the 10 billion Doge scandal, the wing trade by CDS and uh, so on and so forth. With this we thank you very much. You know our contact details. You are always welcome to contact us in case of any query. And we would like to update you that we are coming up with our website. And our website is not very far which is I think 10 to 15 days from now. In our website we are launching a lot of clubs. And you can be a part of our clubs. And we are very pleased to share that Treasury Consulting LLB is also launching a lot of courses in the market. These all are 100% practical courses. You know us that we are completely practical in nature. With this, we thank you very much and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you and have a great luck.